Back injuries, one of the most common work-related disabling injuries in the United States. In 2005, the National Association of EMTs revealed that 47% of those surveyed suffered a back injury while on duty. Every time you move a patient, you risk injury. To make sure that neither you, your team, nor the patient is injured, you must properly lift, transfer, and carry using good body mechanics. This is your best defense against back injury. Acute or chronic lower back pain and stiffness that extends to the legs are common signs and symptoms of a back injury. Back problems are usually not caused by one single event. It's more commonly an accumulation of multiple events and repetitive activities. Applying the principles and techniques of proper lifting and moving every day so that they become automatic will minimize your risk and increase your safety even in the most challenging situations. Moving a patient or object is a two-step process. The first step, decision-making and planning. The second step is the actual lifting and moving. Begin by sizing up the situation. Consider the needs of the patient and what the best position will be for them with regard to their condition. Consider the environment. Are there stairs, elevators, narrow halls, or rough terrain, which will affect your transport device decision? Now, if we have a rock over there, and we'd be going right up through there. Consider the weight of the patient and if you or your crew has any physical limitations that affect your ability to move the patient. Call for more resources or additional help if necessary. This is a little wall right here, watch your feet. Okay, some concrete little wall here. Communicate your plan and actions to the patient and your crew. Communication is imperative and should be continuous as you indicate readiness, navigate difficult environments, and plan the next phase of the move. When performing a lift or move, there are some basic principles to always keep in mind. Position your feet properly, shoulder length apart, on a firm level surface. Use your leg muscles to lift, not your back. Keep the weight of the object as close to the body as possible. Never turn or twist your body when lifting. There are many kinds of patient carrying devices, stretchers, backboards, stair chairs. Whenever possible, it is safer and more efficient to move patients on a wheeled device. Know the advantages and limitations of each kind of device and how to prepare and use them. Practice so you can move quickly, safely, and efficiently. Lifting and carrying are dynamic processes. To ensure that no one individual suddenly bears unexpected dangerous weight and to reduce the risk of injury, you must know where rescuers should be positioned and how to give and receive lifting commands. Certain patient conditions such as spinal injury, head injury, or pregnancy call for special lifting and moving techniques. Also, special consideration and equipment may be needed when moving bariatric or large patients to prevent injury to yourself and the patient. Most gurneys are rated to handle up to 500 pounds. However, when raised to their full height with extremely heavy patients, some can be unstable. The power lift or squat lift technique allows you to maintain your best lumbar posture. These lifts are your best defense against injury. If your thighs or knees are not very strong, the power lift is your best option. Keep your back locked and don't bend from the waist. Turn your feet slightly outward, shoulder width apart. Tighten the muscles of your back and abdomen, keeping your back straight. Straddle the object, your feet are flat with your weight evenly distributed just forwards of the heels. Bend your knees, bringing your center of gravity closer to the object to be lifted. You should feel as if you are about to sit down, not fall forward. To provide balance as you lift, place your hands 10 inches apart from each other, palm side up. This is called the power grip. Using as much of the hand surface as possible, the fingers and palms are in complete contact with the object and all fingers are bent at the same angle. This allows you to obtain the maximum force. As you begin lifting, your back is locked as the force is driven through the heels and arches of your feet. Your upper body comes up before the hips. When lowering the wheeled stretcher or other objects, reverse the steps. Avoid bending at the waist. The squat lift technique is useful for responders with healthy knees and strong thighs or for rescuers with a weak leg or ankle. Place your weakest leg or ankle slightly forward and keep it flat on the ground throughout the lift. Squat down until you can grasp the stretcher using the power grip. 
Leading with your head, push up with a stronger leg, making sure that your back is locked and your upper body goes up before your hips. Reaching for equipment or for a patient is a frequent action in EMS. Whenever possible, reposition yourself or get closer to avoid reaching and lifting more than 15 to 20 inches away from you. Keep your back in a locked position. Do not twist. Use your free arm to support the weight of your upper body if possible. If you are reaching overhead, avoid leaning back or hyperextending from the waist. Lifting or carrying equipment with one hand is necessary at times. Use the one-handed carrying technique. Keep your back in a locked position, maintain proper body mechanics, avoid leaning to the opposite side. Bend at the hips, not more than 45 degrees, and not from the waist. When moving a patient, whenever possible, push, don't pull. Keep the load between your shoulders and hips, through the center of your body, and as close to you as possible. Keep your back straight and bend your knees slightly. Keep your elbows bent and close at your sides. If the object is below the waist level, the push or pull should come from a kneeling position. We're gonna lift you up and put you on our, on our chair, okay? Give me your wrist. Stairs are challenging wrist. and so increase okay. injury right, potential. Yep. Whenever possible, the stair chair technique is always the preferable method for there, patient partner? transport Good. up or down right, the stairs. Using proper body mechanics, keep your back in a locked position. Okay, ready? Yep. Flex at the hips, bend at the knees. Keep the weight and your arms Just close relax. to your body. Place a spotter behind the lead carrier to direct the move and to navigate. They should continually communicate information about the conditions ahead. If a stretcher or gurney is not practical and the patient is on a backboard, the four-point carry should be used. This is a four-rescuer maneuver. Position rescuers according to their abilities, size, and strength. The patient is carried feet first. On the count of three, using a power or squat lift, four rescuers face each other and lift. Once the patient is lifted, the responders turn towards the feet of the patient and walk forward using the one-hand carry technique. Whenever possible, grasp a cot or backboard with your palm faced up. This is called the power lift. Because the arm and hand have the greatest lifting strength when facing palm up, it allows the maximum force from your hands. If you lift with the palm down, the weight is supported by the fingers instead and can force the fingers apart, causing you to lose your grip. Before lifting or carrying a patient on a cot or backboard, Estimate the weight of the patient and determine if there are any limitations in your team's abilities. Coordinate your movements and constantly communicate with them. Do not twist your body and keep the weight you are carrying as close to you as possible. Keep your back in a locked-in position, flexing at the hips, not the waist, bending your knees. In the best circumstance, moving a patient should be done in an orderly, planned, and unhurried fashion. This protects you from injury and the patient from further injury. This is called a non-urgent move. There are two other general types of moves that may be necessary at times, emergency moves and urgent moves. An urgent move is required when a patient must be moved quickly for immediate treatment of life-threatening injuries or for treatments that aren't possible to deliver right where they are. A rapid extrication from a vehicle or an immediate water rescue from extreme temperatures are good examples of an urgent move. Emergency moves are used when there's potentially life-threatening danger to the rescuer, such as fire, explosives, fuel leaks, gunfire, or hazardous materials. The patient is moved before any kind of care or assessment is provided. A body drag is used if you are alone and the danger at the scene makes it necessary for you to use an emergency move. Place your arms under the patient's shoulders and through their armpits. Grasp their arms and drag them backward. Pull the patient along the long axis of their body. This will keep the spinal column in line as much as possible. Regardless of the type of patient move you utilize, keep in mind the safety of your patient as well as your own. Always act on the side of caution. Remember, even proper body mechanics cannot sufficiently protect you if you are not physically fit. 
A proactive, well-balanced physical fitness program includes flexibility training, cardiovascular conditioning, strength training, and nutrition. Special attention should be given to strengthening the abdominal and leg muscles, as these are the primary muscles used when lifting. Here are a few simple exercises that can strengthen your back muscles and abdominal muscles. Wall slides. Stand with your back against a wall and with feet shoulder width apart. Slide down into a crouch with knees bent to about 90 degrees. Count to five and slide back up the wall. Repeat five times. Leg raises. Lie on your stomach, tighten the muscles in one leg and raise it from the floor. Hold your leg up for a count of 10 and return it to the floor. Do the same with the other leg. Repeat five times with each leg. Partial sit-ups. Lie on your back with knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Slowly raise your head and shoulders off the floor and reach with both hands toward your knees. Count to 10 and repeat five times. Exercises like these and other fitness programs can help you prevent injury or protect you from potentially serious injuries. They also help you manage stress and will improve your overall lifestyle. As with most exercise plans, start with a visit to your doctor to discuss any restrictions or limitations that you might have. In three, two, one, no, no. I've been real. <laughs> I'm calm. Hey, bring it out. Get out of the pressure. I'm okay. Talk amongst yourself. Positive attitude in the room. So this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. What have you got? Oh, this is really high. and we let the stair chair out.